Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the Judge Rotenberg Center. But before we do, the usual disclaimers. If you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics. In it, they interviewed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read that article so much. They threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill, folks. Please read the article. Share it on all your social media. We also got included Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding just in case the JRC ever decides to see through with their threat. Trigger warning number one, folks, when we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center and Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please make sure to go ahead and utilize those headphones, all right? Trigger warning number two, this channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and do speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously parental supervision is very much advised, all right? Okay, so where we left off and we're going to close out for the night, folks. We explained in the proposed rule and throughout this final rule how this evidence relates to our conclusions and the strength of the evidence as it pertains to those conclusions. In other words, like sensible, logical folks, they decided in the favor that reflects current medical practices in regards to treatments and programs of us neurodivergent folk and people with mental health issues, okay? They're going with the expert experts. They're going with the service providers who have been providing services for people with various disabilities since literally the 1960s. They're going with the survivor testimonies, not because listen and believe, but because every single survivor testimony thus far has been backed up by literal medical recorded evidence. Y'all know how I feel about having evidence back a claim. At least I hope you do. It speaks for itself. The medical model has numerous amounts of issues and has a great deal of ableism within its structure. And we will go ahead and break down that someday. But with as many issues as it has, The fact that mainstream medicine outright rejects what they're doing at the JRC. And these are not individuals who truly give a shit about us. I'll be blunt. They don't care as long as our parents are happy because the parents and their insurance is what's covering the treatment. Okay. It is what it is. It's got its own issues. If even these people can see that this is horrific, I'm just saying, if you continue to believe this crack, that there's nothing on this planet that can probably save you. But let's move on and finish out, shall we? 
While the commenter may or may not agree with how we weighed any given piece of evidence, FDA did not ignore, misrepresent, distort, dismiss, or favor evidence merely because it supported a particular result. No, what they did instead is what is done in medical circles throughout literally the entirety of the planet. They combined all the most relevant information. Had JRC actually been able to provide legitimate information, that would have been a part of the consideration in regards to the ban. The fact of the matter is, all the things that the JRC was able to produce that did come from peer-reviewed journals, research institutes, people who didn't have a dog in the fight, are legitimately and literally 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. When all the current evidence and data is largely in the favor of treatments that are not including physical aversives, of course, you're going to go with what is the more legitimate practice, especially with the amount of receipts that we all have in regards to those other treatment programs. Don't get me started on my receipts about person-centered planning, because how long do you got? All right. The FDA didn't just skirt around whatever the JRC submitted and dismiss it out of hand because they wanted to ban a device. Are you on crack? In what way, shape, or form does it benefit the FDA whatsoever to make a biased decision in regards to this device? I, what would, how would that benefit them? How would that profit them? It wouldn't. But the DRC, like many of the narcissists out in the world today, like to project their shady shit onto others. We've seen it literally in every single document that is been on this channel that we've gone through in favor of the JRC. Reading their responses, their condescension, their high-handedness, mother of God. You see where I'm going with this, right? The FDA has a dog in the fight. They very much have an interest in the decision that was made. The FDA did not. But what the JRC is projecting is that somehow the FDA might benefit in some way from choosing to ban the device. More than likely, they are insinuating that they were getting paid to do it. That's not the reality of the situation. When they ran that panel, they went by the book to the point that it pissed quite a few off. Okay? They were the unbiased, unattached, with no dog in the fight entity. To try to claim, it's, it's gaslighting 101. The JRC is projecting their shady shit and dealings onto the FDA. Who's surprised, right? We're going to go ahead and close out on that one, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. 
The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please, folks, don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to utilize those comments. I do appreciate your time tonight. As always, folks, we here at Smilling Tea do sincerely hope you have a good one. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.